we uplifted her and when so and so got cheated on we when we we uplifted her blah blah right, blah right, but right. they're not seeing that same energy for Chloe right. and here's my issue with that you lose them the way you get them mm, so okay. and what i mean by that is so when Tristan when she met him mm-hmm. he had a, a woman who was pregnant they were they together yes they were together he Are left her for sh- Chloe sure about that I heard they were together. That's why the rumor I heard. I ain't know. I don't know. Hey, I mean, I we'll wouldn't. never really truly know because right. obviously we not in their circles or nothing like that. But I heard they was together. They said that he left her for Chloe. Damn. Correct me if I'm wrong, listeners. If y'all, if y'all know, if y'all see some stories saying right, that they yeah, were, I heard both. First, yeah. I heard that they were together, and then as of late, it was they weren't together. Mm-hmm. So I don't really fucking know. <laughs> well. So I guess I just wanted to get y'all thoughts on his actions and just what do you think about the whole situation? Well, it just goes to show you. Yeah, what you think, Moanji? African Americans, <laughs> Af- African American men don't cheat. So uh, this is what African American men don't all, cheat. First of all, this is great, great, great. He's so, from he's from Canada. No, no, no. So this is great. So we go from black men, Canadian American. No, he's not. American. We go from we work here. We go from black men, Canadian. We go from black men. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, now you're gonna single out African American men, don't cheat. Yeah. So what about Dwayne Wade? He Kevin Hart. About, he didn't cheat. Jay Z. Who? Dwayne Wade didn't cheat. Yes, he did. What? When did he cheat? When they had a break, baby. The break, break, baby. Calm down. Break. Love each other. I'm, I'm standing still. I'm standing still. My little square. Why you the hold break. the pillow like that? Right. Oh, it actually is really comfortable. So you condone what he did on their break? Um, anyway. because they weren't together. So together, technically, nigga. Let me shut up. Mm, niggas cheat. <laughs> niggas cheat. Niggas cheat. Black men cheat, but African American men don't cheat. We are gonna keep narrowing I it down so I don't either. cheat, and then you are gonna cheat. <laughs> <laughs> I never cheated in my life. Thank you very much. You and I will never, never cheat in my life. Yet. Uh, yeah. Don't say yet. Don't say yet. Don't put that on me. Never say never. Right. Don't put that on me. Mm. I'm not putting it on you. Gonna put us on three. We just don't know the future. I love my woman. Whoever that woman on, is. Put us on three row with that pillow on his hand. <laughs> I, love that one. I love my woman. Mm. I Whoever seen you at Starbucks. And uh, you ain't yeah. got one. Fine as hell. I had to cheat. Uh, no. Nah. You Speaking know what? That is that is ugh. That is sick. <laughs> you sick. You are. Why would you even? You sick. You a sick motherfucker. You gonna do sick. it? <laughs> Speaking of cheating, I see the future. I, know, I see the future now. I know, I know. This is off, this is off topic, on topic. But this girl posted a status and she said, mm-hmm. "Women are literally faced with temptation every single day. We mm-hmm. get hollered at by guys at the gas station, grocery stores, church, <laughs> library, doctor's church. office, PTA meetings. Yet we still don't cheat, and most of the time they look better than the guy we have at home. Mm-hmm. A man see one biscuit head ass hoe with a fat ass <laughs> and, think, <laughs> and think they have to smash. That's y'all big niggas big. just weak and deserve every STD y'all get. Now that's some honesty." <laughs> Yo, I really don't think that's funny. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> can't do this in a while. <laughs> she bought my gavel when I could. Oh, my ass. Put my bike back up. Man, I'm with Reese. First, it was black man don't cheat. Now it's African American man don't cheat. And now because he's Canadian, it don't matter. It's, uh, let him just, why, can't it be, right? why can't it just be the certain individual that cheated? He cheated. Tristan Thompson cheated. Y'all, man, started you, you. But who brought that up? You brought it up. I don't know. You just brought it up. You just it's said African. We didn't even go that route. We sure time. didn't. We didn't say you all men cheat. You brought it up. It's man, your I fault. Can't take a joke. Jesus. Now it's a joke. <laughs> now something's funny. Why can't we hear you? you, uh, you my mic. <laughs> I didn't mute your mic. I did. Sure. There we go. You know what? You're an asshole. See, women, women are. Yeah, you know why? Because uh. there, there's. There's more. There's more women out there than men. Are we gonna? Shut we're we're naturally. We have naturally more temptation than you all do. We have naturally more temptation. Yeah, absolutely. Thing, what does that have to do with anything? Because you just, you just made a whole. You just made a whole Twitter post saying that we got we get we get talked to by da, 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 da. no. We have more temptation than you do. Excuse me, I didn't make anything. That's like you. So you just read a Twitter <laughs> post. You said you <laughs> made. Yes, it is, Anthony. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you won't fuck me. <laughs> Anytime times get to hold you in them goddamn dreams. Right. So, no, but so, but I'm saying you know though, what? I'm saying though, he has a, I guess he has a bit of a track record because people mm-hmm. believe that he was with the the last girl and he left her in her third trimester and now that Chloe was, Chloe just had her baby a couple of days ago and then it came came out that he was cheating on her, cheated on her, like she forgave him. So why we care? She forgave. 
But I, you know what I think this is, is too. I think with Kardashians, there comes a reason why a lot of women don't really side with the Kardashians is because their whole um, makeup of their just their company and their businesses is, is drama and scandal. So a lot of people are you know saying that they had this could have happened six months ago and he could already been forgiven and they just held on to this clip to uh, this could be before she was even pregnant. They could have held on to this clip and then, you know, posted this clip out and then, you know, probably told Tristan Thompson, like, look, hey, bro, we're going to go ahead and post this clip out around the time she's about to have her baby. So just be prepared because nobody ain't really seen me. I haven't seen him post a statement. Like, of, of course, course you want to be low, but right, of course who know who's to he say that? Post Chris- he posted the picture on Snapchat where he said how many times I cheated, too. Oh, that was a, uh, oh, yeah, I saw that. It's funny about that. And and technically, it is it's semi recent because Shay Room tried to throw my girl Gabby Union oh, in that it. That was funny. And she was like, "I ain't this ain't got shit to do with me." I love the comments. They was like, <laughs> "What's she? What we want to know? What's she doing? Some minding her business, watching her man." <laughs> oh, she got her shoes and everything, her little robe dress. I'm like, you know what well, I'm doing. I just I just stand by my statement that you lose them how you get them. It's not. I think it, it sucks either way though because now yeah. that, that that's I mean she forgave him or whatever they say. But that would have been two children without their father being with their mother, you know, growing up. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But mm-hmm. I don't know. Somebody somebody said something along the lines of him being a sex addict, blah, blah, blah. I'll just say, you your tuition, like sis. Yeah, he's like 25. Young. Young guy. He's going to make, make, make a couple of mistakes. Uh, oh, yeah. 35. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Um, I think she's like 31 or 30. Yeah, but he said he's gonna make a couple of those mistakes. He's gonna make some mistakes. He's a young dude. He's a young dude in your 20s. Majority of the time, I'm 26. How many mistakes? I'm about to be 27. Um, I made a couple mistakes, not cheating wise. So, oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. That's my case. Yeah. Anyway. What's, your, what's your case for? Anyway. I said what I said. Mistakes are mistakes. Look, I said. Mistakes are mistakes. A mistake said. is only a mistake if you do it once. If you do it again, it's a choice. We, like we said, we don't know how if he cheated on his first baby. So, nigga, that we cheat all the time. You know what I'm saying? Women like to distract things from you because uh, when you tell them the truth, they don't like to hear the truth. I'm just telling the truth. So maybe you she just, has she used you, her intuition you know, if she listen, believes that he was a we cheater. We got here because of you. No, I'm just you, telling you the truth. Like I told you what happened. She she briefly briefed uh-huh. our listeners on the subject. What's the first thing that come out of this motherfucker's mouth? Well, that just goes to show. There you go, Don't fellas. Cheat. There you go. Yeah, we gonna be in the <laughs> cheap ass nigga, YouTube man. <laughs> anyway. Um yeah, you, no bro. man. Shout out to Tristan Thompson, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey know, Tristy. Take care of your kids, man. We need a sponsor. You know Deborah Cox is from she, Toronto too. I don't know. Who said take care she, of your kids? Yeah, I was watching her on she, Oh yeah, we need a sponsor. Man. <laughs> Yeah, he do need no, to take care of his kids. I know. I just want to see that. So we'll see what happens. Say it, I know. Okay. We'll see what happens. Just be a man about it. It's a stranger in. It's not to me. It's not to me. Deborah Cox. Pop quiz. Tell me. Last look it up, please. Yeah, I got you. Want to bet? Want to bet? How much you want to bet? Wait, before you do it, before you look, want to bet? I Yeah. All right. How much you want to bet? How much you want to put on it? Ten. We ain't shake on it. I'm trying to shake. Clearly, she too far. Yep, there you go. Okay, I see. You got it. You got it. That's common sense. <laughs> you got it. You got what's it. his name? Montel Jordan wrote that song for her, or quite wrote some of it. The one okay. song. What's her first song that came out? The one popping song. Um, we know the song. Mm. Bitch, y'all caught the bus. Nobody. Oh. oh, yeah. I just want to fuck. No. Oh yeah. my god. I ain't you. Yeah, I had a headache, so I, I would have definitely yeah. lost. So, good job. Can I get my twenty dollars? No twenty dollars. YouTube was right there. No, I don't give a fuck. Where is that? We <laughs> didn't. No, YouTube was right there. We didn't no, bet on anything. We didn't. We didn't bet. We didn't bet on. No, we you didn't. How much you want to bet? You didn't say nothing. See, niggas, I said you twenty. Know, no, you didn't. I said twenty. <laughs> I said. We here on the mic. I it said right twenty. There. You didn't say. Did she say? I said twenty. Lassie said ten. That's the only thing she said was ten. <laughs> I said a dollar. I said a dollar, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god anyway. I got a headache again Damn women boy So now you got a headache African American men don't cheat You got a headache Because of yourself Let me put uh, that in the notes here African American <laughs> men don't cheat Whatever 
nigga black. Oh, <laughs> nigga black. You put that up there. <laughs> no, delete that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that shit was fucking. <laughs> That's my song. I didn't say that. I said I'm gonna rewind that shit when we finish. <laughs> I, I wish you would. <laughs> anyway, you know, right? Change my voice and shit. Why don't you tell us about uh, Mr. Zuckerberg and uh, his dear light uh, uh, Facebook hearing? Oh, uh, yeah. So he had a Facebook hearing, I believe. I'm gonna say Wednesday, maybe. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong. Um, the reason why this is uh, occurring is because there was an issue with, uh, one of the, um, there's an app that was used, um, called Cambridge Analytica and with Cambridge Analytica, what they were talking about is that, uh, you know, a lot of times when you use Facebook, say for instance, you're on Tinder, a lot of times you're able to log in with your Facebook information. Well, by you logging in with your Facebook information, you give Tinder the uh, opportunity to basically preload everything, information that they need. So whether it be your um, your pictures or maybe even your profile information and things of that nature. Well, um, apps like Cambridge Analytica, they took that information and actually uh, data mined it to, to help out with the uh, Trump election. Um, essentially what they did was they basically kind of told different um scenario uh, scenarios uh, scenarios and different um area codes no not area codes but different they basically tried to influence mm-hmm. um people to vote for trump um, right mm-hmm. and this caused a problem um because now it's evasion of privacy um now they're saying no that facebook eating. uh right <laughs> facebook is trying to use your data <laughs> to uh basically sell it to other people and so he had this um, hearing with a lot of senators from different places like Nevada. I know uh, Mr. Booker was there too from, I think he's from New Jersey, right? Um, and it's hilarious because a lot of people, a lot of those senators did not know how Facebook worked. Okay. Um, so it was just interesting to see like, hey, you know, um, we've gone on Facebook, we have Facebook for so many years now and people still don't understand how that, uh, how this worked. But Zuckerberg was very willing to do anything that they can to protect the the users and things of that nature, but I guess I want to get your thoughts on um, Facebook. A lot of people are campaigning to delete Facebook. Um, have you? Did you all get anything from Facebook? I think I think they sent me something. Yeah, they put it at the top of yeah, the thing. You can you just read it. More type shit. Like, Here you go. Shit. Right. I know you heard about it. Right. <clears throat> so, like, are you guys planning on deleting Facebook, or are you kind of scared that your data will might have been compromised, or what are some of your your thoughts on it? If you. Um, no, like I said, I was talking to you, I think that was Tuesday, because we had the radio show. Um, my coworker was watching it, and he was telling me about it, and uh, not that we were laughing, but like you said, it was interesting that some of these, for the lack of a better term, old farts didn't really know what the hell was going on. <laughs> because, dude. For lack of a better term, it, old farts. I just, it was funny, because they look, look at him, and they and look down works. at the paper, then they look back up, and he was looking like, why the fuck can I just send my attorney here? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Your user agreements suck. Yeah. I'm like, huh? <laughs> yeah, but then, because uh, me and my coworker was talking about one thing he mentioned was um, he somebody asked him something about um, well, why don't you do something about hate speech? And he was like, we try to do as much as we can, but he was like, but if somebody's speaking a language that we don't understand and we don't have anybody that can translate it, you know, I, I can't really do much about it. But I don't know. I feel like Facebook is one of them things where with that meme that said like. You know, I created Facebook just to rank women, and now it's a right. It, it's politically fucking incorrect according to old farts. So I don't know. It's it's. I feel like people share the information anyway. Not that that whatever Cambridge stuff is right. I mean, don't be collecting my information without my permission. But I just they just don't understand it, and um, I can't really say much more. Don't be giving my shit away. But if you don't understand shit, then don't be asking me no damn questions. Get somebody to understand what's going on so that we can work together to fix shit. Right. And then he got jobs and shit. Like, I always see jobs in Austin and all over the world. Legal teams, subpoena shit. Like, they got shit. They got people to do shit. It's just, <laughs> just, just know what you're asking first. Yeah. I think that was what I was seeing a lot. So, I see. I agree with that part. Um, if you going to try to bring something up and bring this man into court or whatever the case may be, you should be able to understand what his app actually is or what this social media platform actually is, blah, blah, blah. Um, and in regards to the privacy of the app, like as far as regarding what you said, this app that they use to collect all this data. Mm-hmm. So I know for a fact a lot of people don't read the small print. Mm-hmm when they agree to terms and agreements and a lot of these things tell you, okay, this is what we're going to collect, blah, 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 blah. Ain't nobody reading that. 
But <laughs> I, <laughs> anybody reading that? <laughs> I just know that they aren't. I know that they aren't. I've seen people literally just agree, agree. Said, I've done it. it too. So right. I'm trying to update my phone. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> right. But I don't think that that. I don't think that that gives them any right to share our information. Right. Though. Um, I've seen recently that someone posted how you can figure out the the information that Facebook is collecting on you. Mm-hmm. And like their, I think their file was like 2.3 gigs or something. I don't know. Yeah. And I haven't looked at mine, but I'm not going to delete my Facebook um, because I actually like the easiness of signing in with Facebook. So yeah. when I go to an app and it'd be like signing in with Facebook, hell yeah. Like, now I don't have to remember another username or password. Yeah. And I mean... Anyway, all that shit is connected. I know you've searched something on your phone, and then next thing you know, so it's on your Facebook and, and the ads and shit. So how the fuck you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, eh. Yeah. I I don't know. I just think we're just in a different era than what a lot of those people are coming from. The old farts. Yeah. It's, it's just, because some of the questions, we were just kind of like, because <clears throat> I think one of them was like, um, can I ask you where you stayed today? What hotel you stayed in? And he took a sip of his water, and he was no <laughs> he was like see so when you're collecting this information it was just kind of like you getting a spanking and shit <laughs> oh that's the one i think that was the part where they was talking about him because he was like they was like mark zuckerberg is trying to make a joke out of it and but he looked scared and that was like right before he took the sip or something i'm like no they he just really, not making sense to him obviously that meme i'm sorry that meme but summed it up for me you said when you made facebook to rank women but <laughs> I love you. Yeah, the fucking Washington D.C. on a fucking uh, political meeting. Uh, damn. Yeah. So I don't know. Hilarious. Um. Real quick, I just wanted to uh, point out, like I said, I got a chance to watch a little bit of the hearing, and I actually watched it on the Guardian. And shout out to the Guardian because they were able to get a little footnote. Um, Can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah. All right. Um. <clears throat> so I was able to look at, uh, take a look at the Guardian. Um. And they had a, and I watched it on the Guardian. Actually, some of the hearing. And um, there's like a couple footnotes. Yummy. Uh-huh. Oh. Go ahead. See, I don't care about A uh, couple footnotes. And um, <laughs> Cory Booker, um, like I said, one of the centers, I believe, out of New Jersey or New York, one of the two. Uh, he was talking about how there were certain ads that actually uh, <clears throat> discriminated against um, African Americans or people of color, um, especially in the housing and financial department where they were. Um, uh, they were sending out ads of, you know, buy, you can buy this home for this uh, APR rate or something like that. And it just, it was interesting um, how he was saying that he wanted to get uh, civilization, not civilization, uh, civil, um, civil right organizations to come in and kind of take a look and, and, um, and kind of discuss on some of the ads that are being targeted to, to, uh, discrim- uh, to discriminate against people of color. Um, so I guess my point is, is that, Zuckerberg did admit during the uh, hearing that, you know, there are some of the things that uh, Facebook still have to uh, tackle because it's still in, uh, still a growing company. Do you think Facebook grew up too fast? No, I think it's been out for like 10 years, 10, 11, maybe even longer than that. When it come out, I went to high school, 07, 08. Yeah, it's been about 10, 11 years. Um, no, I think it, I think it grew. I think it, 10 years is a nice way for it to grow. I think that was... The, the way it grew, I remember going to basketball camps and being on Facebook, like, I'll be back later, y'all. I'm going on a trip. And then texting my updates and shit. <laughs> right. So I think when I think about technology-wise, the way it, it evolutionized and um, apps and phones and, you know, security and all that, the way it looks, design, I think that in that manner, no, I think it did a, a good job from, from, in my opinion. But I think, like you said, it is a growing company. And I guess that's what I meant, too, by... Um, what the fuck did I say? Um, I don't know. Just him just kind of like we in a different era and oh yeah, about even the example of the, I forget which nation it was. They were the little hate speech and he was like, I don't have anybody that speaks that language. You got all these languages and we're a growing company. So no, to answer your question. I see what you're saying. In my you I agree with Reese. Um, honestly, if it, if in 10 years that we didn't get to a lot of the developments that we went through with Facebook, where we at now, I would be concerned um, to a certain extent because they, I just feel like there's so much time. That was so much time for them to do and try so many things. And that's what technology and social yeah. media stuff is about. You want to keep adding new things. You know, it was fun that at first 
like Reese said, we weren't, we, you know, we would have to say, all right, you know, going away <laughs> and then come back and then re- pick it back up. But then it went to where we could text status updates and then we could download an app and now we can take the app with us everywhere we go. We have Facebook everywhere we go. Like if we did not get to that point by now, I would be like, what the fuck? Yeah. And I, <laughs> yeah, and I guess that's, that's you know, that's on a, like a technology matter as far as, you know, being non disconnected from everybody. That's another subject to me, mm-hmm. but just technology wise, like you go like back, they had horses, then they had cars. Like, and then right. this is something that's completely different than having a car or factory. Like this is a whole different era. So we don't know what the hell is next because we, I don't know. They, they did a lot of shit, so fuck y'all gonna do next. Just don't be stealing my information. I'm gonna mm-hmm. bitch ass. Don't be shit. sharing my shit. Right, you know what I mean? Uh, anyway, where was you going, Wani? Hmm? Are you reading something? You were? No, no, that's it. That's what I got. That's what I got for oh. Facebook. Um, yeah. So, uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Do you we'll think see if it grew too t- fast. Hmm. Look at you. <laughs> I want to say yes and no. Um, they grew. I think they grew kind of with the demand. Uh, you know, initially, initially they were just for college. Now they're for um, everyone, anyone that wants to get in and share their stuff. You know, it's social media is meant to be social. So, you know, I think there's like some of the commercials that have been out lately. There says, uh, you know, initially it was for our friends. And now we get to know friends of our friends. And now we can't just be community. Um, but then, yeah, because uh, a lot of a lot of the technology is uh, Zuckerberg said that they are a tech company, not not really a social media company. They're a tech company, so um, it was just interesting just to see, um, you know, some of his insights on his own company. And um, I don't know. Like I said, in the future, we'll see what uh, what occurs and what happens, and and go from there. So, yeah, shout out to Facebook, and uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see. Um, let's get into the random shit of the week and uh, briefly. Uh, so I got an opportunity to, um, listen to, uh, Eddie Murphy, not Eddie Murphy, uh, you be truth, uh, his Lord. podcast, um, and Reese mentioned it last week about it, uh, Claude, uh, Claude, Eddie, Eddie Claude, Claude Jr. Yeah. Um, and I, and when I listened to it, I was like, wow, was, I'm glad I'm mad I didn't listen to it earlier. So if you don't mind, I want to uh, just play a little small little clip. Um, real fast from that interview. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I? Would it connect this way? It should. That'd be dope if it does. Hold on, let me see. I'm confused. Oh, oh that was your plug. Well, we both right. better get out. You better believe me because <laughs> so. to to. Even poor white people don't understand. They niggas. They don't get it. They really exactly. don't. Exactly. And and Baldwin says, until we figure out why we needed the nigger in the first mm-hmm. place, we will always find ourselves in this trouble. The problem is not, not us. Because Baldwin says, I'm not a nigger. I never was. The problem is, why did you need a nigger in the first place? So who's really the nigger? Ooh. Right. And yeah. so, so 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 the point is that we're at this we're at this moment where the U.S. empire is on its on its on its last leg. That's true. Where 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 white workers can't imagine a better future for their children, where greed has overrun any sense of the public good, where China is rising. America's standing in the world is is diminishing. And so the question for us in this moment of profound crisis is that will we look the ugliness of who we really are squarely in the face so that we can imagine ourselves anew? Um, yeah, so I just wanted to start right there. But I want to rephrase this question. Um, and I guess it's in the same line or same vein of what he's talking about. <clears throat> is America, is America um, a dying concept? Is the concept of America, is, is, de- is it dead? Um, he mentioned a lot about greed, and even I didn't. I didn't want to even want to throw the um, James Ball and nigger part in there, but it's a great point. You know, it's that you when you, like I said earlier, when you put a word on, put something on someone that's so demeaning and it dehumanizes them and gives you an excuse to say, "Well, they're niggers anyway. You can go ahead and kill them." Um, and and then and this other point that he made too is that America is being looked at as we used to be looked at as a superpower, but we got China who's on the rise. Um, that uh, they're becoming a, that superpower, and people don't look at us as the nation of you know hope and Statue of Liberty with the flame and you know this that and the other. So 
like I said, my question to you all is, uh, to both of you, do you think America is dying as a concept? This place of freedom and hope and... Would you like me to take this one first? Um, <laughs> I was going to say yes, so I can just say yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, nigga. Kind of, yes, because... I'm not a nigga. <laughs> I say kind of, yes, because when you think about it, like the, some of the things that you just said, freedom and things like that, that's what a lot of people came here for. Mm-hmm. I, honestly, a lot of people, from what I hear, still do, but are they truly getting that freedom that they thought that they were going to get when right. they came here? And as far as for minorities, I mean, damn near bottom of the barrel here. Like, mm-hmm. they're... We can't really get any justice for a lot of the things that we should get justice for. So I think, yeah, I'm going to just keep mine short and sweet. Go ahead, Sister Reese. Um, I think it depends on who you ask. Um, That's a good point, too. Because if you're asking, in the era that we're in now in terms of the Trump administration, and if you even notice the, the tax changes he did, you know, the, the big companies or rich people that give them that tax break. If you ask them, they they may say, "Oh no, you know we're still." But in a sense, they're still fighting to keep um, to keep it that way. Um, what was interesting too that um, Mr. Glaude mentioned in the the uh, podcast was that um, the term "white value," and he said that you know obviously for decades, years, hundreds of years, it was always that value that you know white is right and since white is better. But just like you said, you have these other superpowers uh, coming up, China and all these other countries, you know, they're producing engineers, more people are going to school and actually valuing education. Um, but now because we the, the white gap or whatever, white value, white is right. Um, it's one of those things where you look at it and you say, so is white just going to be right? Or are you going to make everybody comfortable, make everybody OK to be here so that we can use all our brilliance to be that superpower that you want us to be? Um, so I think that that creates, um, issues and everything. Lassie kind of said, like people still come here. Um, but like you said, are they really getting that American dream when, you know, they tell the Mexicans, you got to go or, um, black people getting drug out of cars and getting shot and killed. And what do you say? Like he said, he said, um, if you can't pick a strawberry or make an app, then you fucking screwed. Right. (laughs) Right. Or if you don't want to pick a strawberry. Um, and I think the, um, the, uh, what's his name? it's funny because i think i think everything that no because i I listened to it Mm -hmm. and i think everything that you said i wrote down which is funny and james ball and the one of the better parts of it was the references to that is because i never thought about it that when i I thought the interview was great because usually you hear dl talk over people sometimes (laughs) and (laughs) and this one was interesting because he did but he actually listened he listens to everybody but it was I like how he was like, man, I always knew you were smart. And like, he would just go, wow. And it was a lot of the stuff that I said, wow, too. Like even the James Baldwin one was like, why did you need the nigga? I'm not a nigga. Let's talk about the person that really needed us. That makes, in a sense, that makes you the nigga. So, right. um, yeah, I don't know. I think uh, that what he said, that sums it up for me. Um, just the whole, because white is right. That's what's standing in the way. So until you let that go, we're always going to, or not always, we're going to end up falling because this one country is going to, or other countries are going to come up and we're going to be in the dust because we have all these issues that aren't cleared up. Right. Race and brutality. And then like you said, greed and um, all this stuff. And um, people aren't even caring about, and I think he mentioned that too, people aren't caring about um, jobs or whatever. They're caring about just being rich in money. So now yeah. um, it's like greed and, and wealth. That's, that's more so what people care about. And like he said too, I don't know if you know white people, but they don't care about you either. Like, it's just rich and just poor. Yeah, yeah. And until you realize that, like, until that, that difference comes out of the way, we all going to have to come together or we going to fall. So Yeah, I was just reading, um, before we got started, I was reading a little bit of uh, Michael Bennett's um, um, uh, Things That Make White People Uncomfortable. And he talked about Fred, Hamp- uh, Fred Hampton. And he said that oh, wow. um, one thing what Fred Hampton did was, uh, and you made made a good point about how uh, white people, uh, it's not with white people. It's about class. Is if you you're up here, or you're down here. Uh, usually, if you're down here, then you know, you, fuck you. Uh, so he All was right. saying that Fred Hampton, what he was doing, he created the Rainbow Coalition, where he was mm-hmm. getting gay people, the poor white people, and um, any anybody else that's been disenfranchised to come together and fight the power. Um, and that's what took the Chicago police, uh, including with the FBI, 
took him out because he's like this man is getting too powerful. He's he's creating, you know, it's he's and, gonna be. They don't want a black messiah, which is one yeah. of the things that I and, think. And not to said. cut you off, but that's what I was gonna bring up. And I thought of earlier when I said about the Starbucks thing. When you have um, white people, and that's why I mentioned millennials or even. Um, the generation after us when you have everybody coming together that's what he did mm -hmm. and that's exactly why they took him out because you have like you said gay people and i think the hippies started to pop up yep, too yep. so you got this whole generation of people like no that's not right and you got jay edgar in the white house already fucking with mlk and everybody else so it's like hell no so when yeah. they don't want that 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 unison to come together where they just think that it's going to break down what they've built yeah. So now it's they put it on everybody else and they put it on black people or they're like I think they mentioned that too. They make it seem like, oh yeah, the reason why white people don't have jobs is because of black people or Mexicans or they put it on us and we're the problem. But it's like you're creating this this ruckus in the company, the company, the in a sense, <laughs> country. Mm -hmm. And these other motherfuckers, meanwhile, is training engineers and look at not to be like that, but a lot of times you look at doctors and they're from overseas. Yep. I want to say right. from overseas, they're over. Of uh, something a different race than mm. what you usually see from here, in a sense. So, right. yeah, yeah, and that's uh, like I said, going back to his book, he was saying that uh, it's important that we, if you're going to uh, create change, you need to create change. You need to tackle all broader issues, not just one issue. Right. Um, like in his case, it was the Black Lives Matter. Uh, but in in regards to that question, I'm going to say uh, no. America's not dying as a concept. Um, I think temporarily it's, uh, it's it needs to be resuscitated. I think right now we're kind of in the coma stage where um, we got uh, Trump, his administration, Trump has brought, um, so, uh, it, it, he brought racism and this, all these other uh, classism and all these um, ideas and rear, to rear this ugly head. Now we see it in the forefront. We see it every day. Uh, and social media has helped too. But I think with him being in office, I think now the concept of America is becoming, it's, it's becoming alive. I think that we got people that are actually standing up against racism. As you said, the millennials are coming together and saying, like, no, we're not. We want better gun. We want better gun control. We want this is not right. Why? When I go to Starbucks as a white person, I'm not getting arrested. But I got two black people here that is doing the same thing I'm doing and not getting arrested. So I, I think um, it, the concept, I think right now we're in a coma. But I think we're slowly but surely getting resuscitated and becoming the American place that we need to be. Because, like I said, immigrants that don't really know. Um, about America, they just the, the ideas that they know, they still are coming here. But unfortunately, with the administration that we have, you know, he's saying uh, get those Mexicans who are racist out of here. You know, get those you know um, people from Islam out of here. We we're gonna do a ban on these con seven con uh, Islamic countries that we feel like are you know and stuff like that. And it's just like once people are starting to see like this is not right because we've been kind of you know like kind of chilling for a little bit lately. So I don't think the concept is that. I think the concept is being resuscitated, and I think that um, this is a great time to. Uh, really feel empowered and, and um, make a change. And that's why I say I think it depends on who you ask. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I think that when you say it's not dead, I think if you ask somebody that's from born in the 50s, 40s, 30s, whatever, and they're white and they may be, just be racist, I think that oh, the, their good, concept good of, of their America is totally different. Good and that's point. why, and I think he mentioned that in, in the podcast too, that that's what the whole Make America Great Again thing is about. It's right. about Make us great. Let's basically let's go back to what we used, what we know us just being who we are, mm -hmm. and um. Then I think that the the new concept, they're the new America, and I think that's where I could see where you, what you're saying, the whole dream and being together and freedom. I think that's what is coming. What we're we're wanting to happen. The new generation, or you know, young white people, trying to notice like that ain't that ain't right. Right. Um. So yeah, I just wanted to mention too, just to kind of real quick, not to get off subject. Um, it, for me, just kind of understanding where we are in America, it just sounded like we talked about MLK. I think that was last week and just kind of what he had to go through. I watched another documentary or what have you on, I think it was National Geographic and it kind of more so focused on J. Edgar and the FBI and stuff like that. And I don't know, I just look at just some of the stuff that <sighs> it's like some of the shit we just wasn't really, I think, was that, I think he mentioned that too in the podcast what we know as Martin Luther King was dumbed down to. Yeah. He did um, say that. Yeah. Yeah. It was dumbed down to his dream speech yeah. and then his holiday. And it really kind of was, he was just a great person, but his a approval rate was fucking below zero when he died. So it, I can't remember what the fuck I was just going to say, but I, I just been having all these thoughts lately. Like this man was really just. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I seen some of your tweets too. You were talking about how you get chills looking at the I have that when and, I'm when I I know I you think people probably think we just be talking shit, but like really, if you really and you know, I encourage you because they I think they only have like the last three minutes on air anywhere on YouTube live because you'd have to listen to the whole thing. They have the last three minutes of him talking where he like. I don't know what will happen now. And I like when you hear you like he don't know what's happening. He getting these death threats. Prophetic. I feel like they told him where he was going to die and it was going to happen. Like somebody told him. I think and to me that's different than like I'm going to kill you. Right. Like the way he spoke was like I don't know what will happen now. Like of course I want to live a long life. And then he got that that somber slow talking pastor preacher voice. He like I think he knew and he just was like put your money here support like I don't know. It's just. You think of like you like 20, a will, like his last dying yeah. wish. Like, I want you all and then to he do died this and he me. got killed the next day. Yeah, and they, right. I think like they even said, well, like I said, he put his head in the air, was going to go back in the hotel to grab his coat, and then boom. Yep. And they, I think he said that too. That's the reason why they shot him in the face, shot him in the, yep. take his mouth off. Like, yep. so, um, yeah, it's just the America we live in. I think it's it's uh it's a lot different. I think um, curious to see where we go with it. It's just that concept is dying to certain people and it's becoming something different. And I think it's, it's scary for those type of racist people to see people to come together. And the yeah. thing about Jay Edgar died in 72, like is, was it Quintel, Cotel pro, whatever little shit he had going on, uh, like illegally doing stuff that he shouldn't have been like tapping. Wire oh tapping yeah. In. Counterintelligence. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. They said they even found documents on uh, Fred Hampton in there. The whole that's what they said they found the floor the floor plan of his uh, apartment and he had informants with him and that's what's fucked up about it too. Yeah, like, that was sad. I, yeah, when they when they had the gentleman not gentleman but the guy that uh they said hey you know we, we see you auto theft let me like, go ahead and um get inside the uh the Black Panther and get close to Fred Hampton actually be his spider guard yeah and uh, give us layouts the plans and stuff like that. And, I yeah, saw him in an interview at the Black Panther Party. I was like, damn, like how he must feel. I don't know. He, I would feel terrible. Like, this is the stuff that they, they probably told him, like, we're just gonna go ahead and arrest him. Um, you know. Not even, but see, and that's another thing to think about. You think about them saying that, or it's, it could be the other side of it. Like, I don't give a fuck what you say. And and they what they mentioned too, that they did that because he had his own record or something. Mm-hmm. He was trying to get expunged. Yeah, expunged, yeah. Yeah. So it could be a whole another side of it. Like, I don't give a, it it ain't decent. It's you do this or, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And then it had it like you said, it's fucked up because I think they said he had to go MIA and I think he walked in traffic and got hit by a car. Or, mm. So people was like, he was he wasn't depressed. I'm like, man, you don't know what that you man was. You don't know what thinking. that man was going through because I, I it's it, it probably told him they probably if you don't do this, we'll kill you. Right. But I'm pretty sure they said it because if they're telling them that we want you to do X, Y, and Z mm-hmm. and they let him go, you know, he probably had wires on him all the time at all times, cameras on him at all times. So even if I would like, hey, you know, they about to, they trying to kill you, bro. You're like, bro. Right. They were like, they were you gonna pop his ass. So um damn, I was kinda going, I was gonna say with that. But yeah, I just <laughs> wanted to ask, you know, ask that question. Uh, that's a good point that you think that, you know, a lot of races see that, you know, the dream is being de- deferred, if you will. And um, and that, you know, that America, that their America is not. Uh, Make America great again. Not, you know, not making America great. So, yeah, mm, I really want to get inside the the, eye, the heads of the founders and when they wrote that, you know, we the people and all that stuff. Like, what are some of the thank thoughts? Thank you for saying that. You just really made me think of my thought. Oh, my God. Thank you so much because I was struggling <laughs> over here. I wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just watching just those documentaries and just kind of reading stuff and understanding um, just how, because if you think of like the civil rights bill and things like that, you think how all these years we go with not being able to vote and people marching and now we get to vote because y'all passed the bill. Right. Why? And I thought it was interesting that, and it was kind of the same realm of like the whole Black Panther thing, like where they, you know, was it Huey P and everybody else, Bobby said they knew the laws and that's what pissed them people off. And I, for me, I didn't know that it was the same thing with like MLK and the civil rights movement. And if you watch his speeches, he was saying like, you know, the law of the land says that all men, or every person is able to to um, to vote or do this and do that. And then he mentioned something like, you know, what I'm saying, where is that promise? So it's one of them things. And if you, if you watch the interview with MLK and the other guy interviewing him, he was like, you know, well, white people are, you know, I guess yeah, white people feel like, you know, we let you vote. We gave you everything. So what more do you want? Right. So it's one of them things where if you look at the laws and how they're written, I think that's if you listen to white people they'll say you know well we follow the law but if the law is written that way we'll give you what the law says so a lot of if you get what i'm saying a lot of the stuff um in addition to voting they feel like we shouldn't have to give you because the law doesn't say that so i guess i say this to say in my mind that 
that puts the fact that it's important to make sure you vote and do all the stuff in not even just like presidential level, but just in your community right. Right. to change things that need to be changed. Because um, I guess them making that fact and then of course voting and doing everything else. Uh, I mean, I mean, marching, uh, that's how a lot of those bills were passed. So I just, it, it put another perspective into my mind on like, actively voting and you know people got their thoughts on that. i remember from um from history class that there were two type of people there were the uh damn it i forgot their name there were the the strict constitutionalists where they read verbatim what the constitution says the constitution says that x y and z is supposed to happen and i forgot the other the uh the opposing people but they are kind of loose based where they're like well you can interpret it this way and that way and and that's just with anything like People have their own interpretation of this bill. Like, we can't go back and say, go back to the forefathers and say, when you guys were writing this, what exactly did you mean to say? Right. Was it for liberty for all or just for, you know, white skin? Exactly. Or, you know, this and that. And then it's like, they dead and gone. They kind of, they probably looking down right. wherever they from. Like, oh man, we fucked up. We didn't yeah. give these people too much power. And it, who's to say? You know, I don't know. Yeah. But, um, I can go. I can go on and on. Yeah, that's I, what I'm I was saying. gonna say. I was gonna say some other shit. Like when they got over here, they were trying to get away from the king, King George, and they were probably like, "Yeah, we finna take over. We finna do a little. We finna take some of the stuff, and then we're gonna right. just make a whole new concept. We just gonna flip it on top of his head and get people rights and shit. And then, and then I don't know. But now we gotta run this country, so we need people <laughs> to run this country, and then get these slaves. Let's go get some some free labor and run it. Uh, it's just plenty of shit, boy. Yeah, yeah it, it, it makes you. Books, it makes you wonder, but and read the, the. I ain't gonna say the right books, right. but the right books. Right. In Not school. the watered down shit. Yeah. Like, oh, America was an ancient. MLK was a mighty, mighty man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he uh, was, but it's like there's so much more to right. him. Than yeah, that. yeah, yeah so. man. When you start getting woke, fan, you'd be like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. So, good discussion. Oh, sorry. Good discussion. Lasted a little bit longer, but that's mm-hmm. what Darnell People said. Need to know. Fine. <laughs> that's fine anyway uh, i think lassie had this topic i think i've seen it a couple of times on um uh twitter or facebook and i think i did first see it on twitter too so lassie so i saw this thread um a, a girl so the, the post reads most men don't marry the woman they love loved the most they marry the woman that is around when they are ready to marry I saw this. I saw this shared on Instagram and wanted some male opinions on this. Is this statement completely false or does it hold some truth? Um, so she posted it, and a lot of guys um, ended up DMing her, giving her their stories. But before I read a couple of those, excuse me, Juan J, what do what do you think about that? Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Oh man. Damn. That's um, that's it. My eggs are hurting again. Um, <laughs> I'm taking what I can get. Jay. Right? No, oh. it's not. Uh, <laughs> no, you're so stupid. Uh, <laughs> damn, that's good. This, you didn't see that? No, I didn't know. I haven't seen this. It's because the reason why I'm so conflicted is because some men, yeah, they they marry the one that they marry the one that's around, but they in, eventually find out that they really they're the ones that they really really loved. Um, so that's why I, I kind of say it might be false. I think it's false. But okay, go ahead and read some of that. I want to hear what some other men thought. <laughs> yeah, the comment, okay. I think I was on Twitter for like an hour one day. Like, Ooh, I know, I was just scrolling. I'm going to just read a few. Okay, um, so this one guy said, just read the thread. I've been with my girl going on seven years now. Been together since 18. A lot of other women have been pressuring me and my girl to get married because we've been together so long and we are, we're in our mid-20s. Of course, my girl is letting... The opinion of others influence her. She loves me, but isn't going to wait forever. I love her very much. Not going to lo- lose the love of my life because of others' opinion. The truth is, sometimes either man up or let some other man have your woman. There is some truth to this thread. It affects both men and women. Um, Where's that one that I read? It was so sad. Oh. I think I know what you're talking about. <laughs> we'll read that one. Um, okay. I have read your post on men not marrying the love of their life, and it has really broken my heart. I'm 27, and I have mm. been with my girl for six years. She has been pressuring me to marry her, but I thought maybe this is not the right time. In May 2017, we broke up because she couldn't take it anymore. Ooh. We have since been trying to get things going on. We have... We have since been trying to get things going, but sadly, she's no longer interested. I think I will live my life a sad man forever since I never took the chance to marry her last year. Now, I believe I will marry any woman now. 
That's dumb. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> So this guy said that he's actually gonna take this to his deathbed, but he ended oh, up I think I remember telling that her. Um, it's anonymous, please. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Um, but he said we were together for a year before deciding to make our own make our own ways, in which I met someone else I actually loved. At this, at the same time, this new girl's parents weren't being supportive of our relationship. Then I went back into being single before realizing the former had been waiting for me all this time. Went back to her since I felt that. If I was not getting her, I might not even get married at all. Can't say I don't love her. I can't say I don't love her at all. Yes, I do. But it has been hitting me that those decisions back then are only made due to circumstances at the time. <laughs> mm. Oh, man. But um, it's really, honestly, um, a lot of the good ones are like three and four pages. So I'm not going to go geez. into those. But I read a letter. <laughs> Damn it's, it's, she got a lot of comments mm. like and a lot of them to me were along the lines of yeah and then there were some like no but it was a chunk of them that said yeah i i can agree with that yeah 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 and a, and a lot of the some of the guys even said that it really affects both people it affects the guy because yeah. he's living his life sad and shit and now that this woman that he did marry she's going to be missing out on that piece of man that she's not ever going to get because it's that piece of him else. is in love with someone else, someone else. um I think it's I, I I can't say if it's true or false. Yeah. Um, because I'm not a man. But I have seen guys be so head over heel in love with this one girl and then when it don't work, then they go over here to this next girl and next thing you know, boom. You know, they not married yeah. they not yeah. ready to marry girl number one because we ain't gotta get married just because everybody's saying it, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. Let's just let's just have kids and live together for eight years and you know, marriage is just a title, but then when she leave him because she wants to be married, then they go to this next girl and she's saying the same thing. And he like, well, damn, I already fucked already up here, yeah, so yeah. I might as well marry this girl here and now she type cool. thing. She helped me out, right? And <laughs> so, no, somebody said that too. Somebody yeah, said that they yeah. married a girl because she was there for him. She, she, yeah, she was there for him, and he feels that she turned him into a great man. And mm. I don't know, it just made me kind of. Not sad, but it made me. Yeah, it's scary. It's very scary. Exactly. And I put in the notes to, just to kind of give like a movie example. Not to say it's a good example, but it made me think of it when I seen it. I was just I posted the house party thing because I think I was talking about it at work mm-hmm. that one scene. So I was like, let me watch it. <laughs> so um, I was watching it uh, yesterday when I got off work, and it made me think of um, I don't know if you ever seen House Party Three, but it's kid, the one with IMAX, right? Who? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or immature when they were really young, and Bernie Mac, and um, and this particular one it was one, two, and three, and um, kids' love interest was Sydney, which was uh, Tisha Campbell. Mm-hmm. So in this one, you know, he has a whole new woman. He's going to get married, and um, Sydney comes back, and, you know, she's she's seen the, um, or I guess the new wife, her fiancé, is kind of worried that he's still stuck on her because she's, like, talking to her cousin because they got, like, a little jewelry store, and she's like, yeah, you know, we woke up this morning, and he asked me, was I going to make that French toast? And she was like, I never made you French toast. Ooh. And he was he was like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, play, you know, one of his people, they made, you know, she was like, mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> So her cousin like, girl, I told you, whatever, whatever. So then mm-hmm. Sydney popped up, and she was just like, oh. And she's like, yeah, I just want to congratulate you. You know, you're you're good for him type stuff. And she's like, oh, okay. So she ain't really thinking much. But then towards the end, he randomly run into Sydney in a hotel, and they she gave him like a little hug and a goodbye forever kiss, and she thought it was something else. But uh sydney told him like you know she's good for you she's gonna give you what you need and not to say that she was like in them that type of situation but it, it gave me that vibe of you know she's who i really want to be with but right. she was there she's gonna give you what you need type thing right. i don't know like it just and that and seeing that it scares me even though it was a movie but it kind of reflected that so yeah. i just i be looking at a different perspective it's like wh- uh, yeah, you might have that longing want for the woman that you were fully in love with. And here's this woman here that's giving you X, Y, and Z. Uh, I just think that, that if you go, if you be with this woman here, that's who you are supposed to be with. Um, and it's scary because you really don't know. Maybe it was something that you know that you might have missed out on, an opportunity that you might have missed out on. Maybe words were exchanged that shouldn't have been exchanged, and you know, unfortunately, you can't forgive each other for it. But that was the person that you fell in love with. That's why I say over time, you can't learn to love someone and be in love with someone. Um, but it's just, I, I just feel like whoever you're with, you're 
supposed to be with that. You're supposed to be with that. I hear what you're saying, but just from reading these responses, I'm gonna send you the thread. A lot of these men are just really saying like, no, like they they saying yeah. that it's true. They saying that like I get what you're saying. I, yeah, but in their minds and in their hearts, they just believe that if they could go back in time, they would be with that woman that they that they're not married to. Right, and that's why I'm saying like I understand yeah. that, but. They, they, because they're looking at it that way, like they're looking at it at the past. You gotta, they if they look in the future, like in the future, they look in the present and see where they are, the situation they are. You can't, you can't change the past. Like you're, you're the way that things were set up. You was, can't you, change the past, but they also can't change their feelings. Yeah, that's that's the sad part. I mean, that's the, that's yeah. the scary part. Is but you because they're still stuck in the past. You you can't change the past. You gotta live in the present that you're in. You're there for a reason, and I don't think that they're looking at it like that. I think they. I get what both of y'all saying because I said that too. Like that was my first thought before I read any comments. Like, oh yeah, well, duh, everything happened for a reason. You didn't work out because life, right? <laughs> but I think that they um they are looking at it both ways i think it's one of them things like you said you can't change your feelings and i am where i am now because of this x y and z so i think they understand why they're there and everything happened for a reason and granted like you said you're supposed to live in the past or the um, present but those feelings keep them back there or just maybe it's just being truthful with themselves just being honest and i think the part that kind of sucks is like really being honest like right right yeah you know if but I think they do respect their current situation. Yeah, because like I'm okay. Imagine you're married and your husband kind of like sits you on the table right over there and be mm-hmm. like, you know, I'm gonna be real with you. Like I love you, but you know, I still got. I still think about Brenda from, you know, several years back. And you gonna think to yourself, who oh, the fuck is Brenda? Oh, mm-hmm. that's the one that did X, Y, and Z and ripped your car up and shit. Mm-hmm. I wonder if it's that. I won't say that deep, but that. I wonder if it's one of them things where you. You see the question and you think about it and go, yeah, but I do love my current wife. But it's if like you know what I'm saying, like it's not that deep. But it's just yeah. you think about it and go, yeah, but yeah. I love my wife. I'm here and this is where I am. But I agree, like you know what I'm saying. Like, I get both sides because right. at first I was like, I was dumb. You should. There's a movie, one of them black movies. Um, old boy, no, homeboy from a, um. What's the dumb? Please don't. Mind. Don't be a rom com, please. Buddy. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, it's called My First Love, and it's rom-com. um, Janae from the game, and then Darwin from the game. And <laughs> when these ghetto black, <laughs> no, it's not, it's not really. It's not really ghetto. It's not really. It's actually really good. No, um, it they're, 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 no I don't know where I, I saw oh, it on Facebook I Live. Oh. I, I saw it on Facebook Live. I actually got the video saved. I'm gonna tag y'all in it. Um, no. it's, it's good. I'm telling you, it's good. Okay. It's uh, they get married. They get married. They are married, but um, Darwin is too busy focused on his um his relationship, or whatever. And um, unfortunately, um, she uh, Janae from the game says you know what i want a divorce and she really wasn't she What's really called again my first love and she really she really didn't want to get a divorce but she's threatened him with that divorce and he was kind of like well you know that's what you want to do you this know, sounds like that one movie it. with the erica girl erica who erica the chick from uh survivor's remorse we talked about this before with the other dude that be in all the movies i don't know his name but anyway and um and they eventually got back together because they she was finally found out that she was pregnant and this, that, and the other. But um, my point of saying that was that a lot of times we look at things, we don't take, I guess they just don't take look at things and say, this is why, and I guess going back to the point originally, like this is why it happened for a reason. Like, you know, this made, that situation made me the man that I am today for the woman that I am. And back to your point with the house party movie, they're like, yeah, this woman would is the better choice for you. My feelings, because I, I harbored this time and these feelings and this love for you, doesn't necessarily mean if we were to get together, it doesn't necessarily mean it would be peaches and cream, but it could be probably disastrous. We only love each other because, you know, that time we spent together and maybe because, you know, what we shared. But now I got this woman that you know, willing to do everything for me, cook for me, and it's like... Mm. Yeah, but I, I guess to, to my point, I think that's what they understand. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's scary. I that's scary as fuck. I just don't want to. I don't. I just don't want no one to be like, mm, well, she yeah. does this. We we cool. We vibe. We have this type of relationship. I'm gonna marry her. But in reality, they're like, yeah, feeling like so she'll grow on me. Right. Like <laughs> right. like I want love me from the start. Don't love me. Yeah. 
10 years later yeah. after we've been through yeah. so much shit and you felt like you settled the first five years yeah. like but i will say this i think there are people that do go through something where it's a situation like that they broke up they they feel like that was a love of their life and and they use that and i think that's kind of what i'm saying they use it as a lesson and they go on to meet somebody that they that does whatever for them and they learn and that the, uh, that 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 person's for them too, and I, but I think that they do just use that as a reflection of like kind of what Moanje said. It's one of those things where you know I thought this was the person for me, but I'm here for a reason. But just to reflect back, that's how I got here. Maybe it'd be different, but I love her and her being <laughs> that current person, and I'm here now and I learned my lesson from her. So I don't know. Mm, right. That's scary. Fam. Yeah, it's very scary. My girl coming to me. I really want dark dark coin. <laughs> I really want to die Quan, but uh, oh, since he was here and uh, you proposed, and I just said, yeah. He said, know. shout out to Kwani. And Dark Kwan. Someone, uh, real quick before we kind of get off this, um, some someone under a lot of the messages that she was getting was saying that they think that it refers to women more than men because women feel like they're, when their bio- biological clock is ticking, they're like, damn, I'm you know, nearing 30 mm-hmm. and That's I need to, point. you know, yeah. I need to start getting married, having kids, da, 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 da. Um, so I, do I think it goes both ways? Yes. But yeah. I think ultimately, cause I've seen men be so heartbroken men, they get their heart broken and then they're just done. They're just done. <laughs> Women, they, they get their heart broken. They heal, they move <laughs> on, they love again, <laughs> but men, it take a while oh, for them shit. to love again. So I, mean, I can see shit. it being more true for guys than women, but I mean, shit. No, to your point about the real quick, to your point about the uh, um, bi- biological. I was talking to someone, and uh, they said the same thing. If I don't get, if I don't get, um, if I get married by this age, I'm not having any children anymore. And I'm like, well, what if you get married a little bit after that? I'm still not having children. I'm like, you just don't know when it's, when the time is going to happen. And I was yeah. like, hmm. yikes. Well, you know. Meh. Yeah, and we, don't, and we don't talk no more. Um, so next, uh, what else we talking about? Mm. Ooh, Yelp hit me back. What they say? Read it. We saw your review. Oh, and now we're Jeffrey deleting F. it. Jeffrey F likes your photo. <laughs> Maybe hold off. Jeffrey F ain't trolling. Let me see. <laughs> Bye. Make sure. Um, who's this? Oh, he's a black guy. Oh, who is Jeffrey F? Damn, how come I can't see Jeffrey? I'm sorry. Is he, is he black? I'm trying to find. Oh, he he black. He look white. Um, in Fontana, California. Oh, he, he posted the pictures too. He said, please enter at your own risk. Uh, yep, I tried to call and the phone was off the hook. I live in California and hit the Starbucks on a regular. I know businesses business are all about money, but after seeing how y'all really feel about people of color in Philly, I can say comfortably, I don't want to spend another fucking dollar at your place. There's other places and y'all just lost another person. All right. Shout out to our white ally, Jeffrey F. There you go, buddy. All right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. (laughs) You an idiot, dude. I can't stand you. I quit. My last episode. You want to go for the nine? (laughs) I'm ready. You want it right here. Let's let's go. Let's go. Hello, I see. This is my sound. All right. (laughs) All right. My nine. Probably be short and sweet. Dear group, I recently went on a date with a nice woman. Mm. We had dinner, drinks, and a great conversation. Mm -hmm. As the waiter brought our bill, my date asked me, could I buy two takeout dinners for her kids? I said no, because I don't even know her kids. She had an attitude for the rest of the night, <laughs> so I cut the date short. Question, was I wrong for not buying her kids? I never met dinner, and was she asking for too much too soon? Mm, this is a fucking great Anon. I, 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 was, I was in this situation. I wasn't asked, but we went to, um, we went to a place. We went to a, a, a restaurant and um, <laughs> 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 went to a restaurant, and um, I paid for both of our stuff and this particular person had a child and um and mm. she was like um you know before we leave i want to buy my daughter something to eat mm. um and i was like you feel like you, you needed to buy it no I, I didn't feel pressure to buy it but in this case i just feel like i think that's that's kind of selfish like 
Why would you expect this man that you're going on a date with to buy something for your children that he doesn't even met, know or having a relationship with? Like, I, th- I think that's tricking. But you're going to get to know my kid. I'm just that's, that's tricking. <laughs> like, that's tricking, fam. I'm sorry. No, I think you just came out of now. Now, in my mind, I think you just came out of you just get a meal. You can't afford shit. More than likely, she probably did. What about yep. you, Lassie? What you think? Um, I think she asking for a lot too, um, too soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think I think she asking for a lot too soon. Um, that's kind of that's something that could happen down the road, depending on how often you ask. But like, my baby, I wouldn't. I would never do that. I would right. do it the way Mwanje kind of said it. Like, okay, if he paid for my meal, you know, as we're wrapping up, I'd be like, oh, you know, I'd be like, okay, I want to buy my daughter some food or whatever, right. and just do it that way. Like, I mean. You were nice enough to pay for my meal, so but I mean, I still gotta feed my kids. Right. And instead of making an extra stop, might as well get the ass on here while I'm here. So, right. yeah. um, but or do yeah. it on your own time. Like if you're not, if, yeah, we're at this restaurant, but maybe no, this is how you do it. Go on a date, you sit down, you get to know them, okay. order, the and then you, then you tell the waiter anything else. Yeah, I want to get an order to go for my kids for after. Boom. <laughs> oh, so sweet. So, and the waiter's so, so like, so ready make when it, leave. Yeah. yeah it, Fellas, it's kind of like when you get a stay, her phone number is two four. It's kind of like when oh. you get a when you order something for because there's been a bunch of times where you go out or like when I was younger or just even before like you go out with somebody and then you be like oh yeah I want to get my sister or somebody so it can be ready when you fucking go so you ain't right. gotta wait the extra 10, exactly. 10, 10 20 minutes. So, right, you yeah. do it while you, midway eating and then you know separate. you're a strong black just playing. <laughs> <laughs> what she want her mama? Like, oh, you got money, she buy her mama. Put it on my table. Buy her mama some food. Put it on my table. Yeah, no, nah, she uh, drive, she doing a lot. Too. I don't think he wrong for I feeling how he feel. Cut the date she got to uh-huh. she got to get it together. Do better, sis. <sighs> yeah, do better. Grow up. Grow the fuck up. <laughs> Please. Shout out to Tristan Thompson. Are you only saying it because I got the same last name? Because I really want some dinner tonight. <laughs> you Thompson men. Blah. Well, that's my slave name. See you gr- Chicken tenders. It's my grandfather's name. <laughs> A play for two. <laughs> okay. Episode uh, 71. 71. Last you got 70. that good quote. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry. That, that's actually what I'm I was. Ready. That's what I was about to do. Ready. <laughs> that's some standby music. Please hold. Let's <laughs> I don't know if I read this, but I'm going to read it today. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Code of the week. Opportunity doesn't come when you want it, so stay prepared. Success is at your fingertips. Stay ready. You ain't got to get ready. Mm. If, if you stay ready, you don't never have to get ready. Um, My empowerment of the week, I think it really ties in uh, with a lot. I actually got an opportunity to see his episode, and that is from the the illustrious uh, Jay-Z, Sean Corey Carter. Um, uh, his we, name <laughs> we all know him um, as the rapper, husband to Jay Z, uh, to Jay Z, to uh, Beyonce, <laughs> to <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, you know, twenty one Grammys, uh, I think fourteen albums, if I'm not mistaken, thirteen. Um, has a net worth of over uh, nine hundred million dollars. Um, the reason why I chose him for the empowerment of the week is because uh, of uh, the, the the ability to change. Um, in the beginning of his career. Um, you know, this guy, uh, you know, kind of glorified selling drugs and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. And um, now to the point that he's in his career now, he has children. He's not in that lifestyle anymore. And yeah, he still talks about that lifestyle, but he talks about it from a place of lear- uh, growth and learning. Um, if you got an opportunity, as I recently mentioned last week, um, check out his uh, Letterman uh, episode on Netflix. And I got to finally got an opportunity to watch it. And it was just remarkable how he was able to have a conversation and uh, illustrate everything that he's gone through. Uh, illustrate it in a way that makes sense to people that don't understand his, uh, like myself, that don't understand his struggle at, or the struggle that he's been through. Um, and I just take this time out to say that you know you're not the person that you used to be. If you are, um, you were considered a, a, you know, drug dealer or a drug user mm-hmm. or a criminal or whatever your whatever people prostitute, whatever people put on you, um, bully, whatever. You are ha- you do have the ability to change and become something that you some something great and that your past does not define you. Um, just like Jay Z, and you can you know win Grammys and have a net worth of nine hundred million dollars. So yeah. that's the empowerment of the week. You have been empowered. So back to you, Bob. 
Uh, as always, ask YBO. Make sure you guys submit our que- your questions to YBO Podcast in yeah. my YBO Podcast at gmail.com or go to our website, YBO Podcast, MKE.com. There will be a search box at the very middle of the page. Plug in your name and your question, and we'll be sure to answer it. Back to you, Bob. Um, 71, how do you guys feel about that one? I think it was great. Great. Great episode. Great. A lot of great conversation. Um, oh, we, should we plug the panel too? Plano, I think it's next week, right? Um, we should have did that at the beginning, but yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll end up doing some promo. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good news radio. Yeah. Uh, Brunch of Besties. Uh, good news is out of LA. They're coming to uh, Milwaukee the weekend of the 21st. Um, so to be a panel, everybody come out. We'll be at, uh, anybody got it up? Yeah, Revel Revel Bar. Um, I think the first uh, from five to six is going to be like a mingling. Five to seven. Five to seven. And after that, it's going to be the uh, panel. We have a couple of uh, yeah. podcasts and a couple of different podcasts. Kind of discuss you know how we got started and what some of the challenges of being a podcaster and of um, color. And, yeah, of color. So of yeah, color. come check us out. Um, we're going to be there and uh, come mingle with us and you know. Join us. Join us. Go Don't over. drop the ball. Make the call. Uh, yeah. Call three four two one thousand. <laughs> um. Yeah. How you feel about seventy one? Oh, we talked about that. Sorry, I thought it was great. Anyway. Yeah, um. Uh, Lassie, tell them where they could find the pod. You can find our pod on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, Stitcher, Spreaker, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Videos, videos, videos every week. So make sure you subscribe. I'm checking my top thousand videos. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and as always, you can always check out our radio show, 8 p.m. every Tuesday, um, Central Time, um, separate from the podcast. Please remember that uh, hour-long show, um, River West Radio, 104.1. Um, if you're local, and then www.riverwestradio. Um, if you're not, and even if you're not local, you can always check it on, mm-hmm. on the website as well, too. So check us out, please, 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 please. I want to tell them about the... We- Sponsors, anybody want to, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I got a couple of people that I've been talking to. Um, if you want to be sponsored mm-hmm. on the show, just hit us up on our Gmail, YBO Podcast at uh, gmail.com, and now uh, we'll definitely get back in touch with you. We respond very fast, so you don't have to worry mm-hmm. about it. Oh, true. Um, and then, too, you know, if, if there's anything that you that we might need extra, you know, just hit us back right away, and we'll, we'll make sure we get it taken care of. So, um, you just, <laughs> just hit us up, we'll let you know the prices and uh, very reasonable prices, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll get you out there. We have Guests from not only our radio show but also on our podcast too. So you're gonna have a mm-hmm. opportunity to access a lot of a uh, lot of listeners lot of and potential folks. customers. So yeah, uh, check us out. Check us out. Uh, episode seventy one. As always, I am Reese Berry. That's Ara E E S E B E R R A. Four Wise. That's Twitter, Tumblr, Snapchat, and Instagram. Lassie. I'm Lassie at Lola Baby on Snapchat B A Y B E E, and on Instagram and Twitter at La Creme Lola Wanye. <laughs> <laughs> and it's your boy Moan Yay. Uh you can find me <laughs> on uh all social media platforms. That's M W A N J E. That's Mike W Walter A no, uh and you can uh yeah, check me out and uh yeah, Moan you got in for leopard. Episode seventy one. We up out of here. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, seventy one. Until the next time, guys. See you guys next week.